Can the living communicate with the dead? That's where studies of mediumship and anomalous information reception enter the picture. Over the last two decades, a handful of research groups have attempted to study mediums under controlled conditions. Some laboratories, notably organizations like Windbridge and various university teams, report that certain mediums produce accurate, verifiable information about deceased persons they could not have known by normal means. Meta-analyses of controlled experiments have suggested small but statistically significant effects beyond what chance or simple fraud would predict. These studies are methodologically difficult and have attracted intense scrutiny, but they exist. Investigators have documented hits, misses, and puzzling patterns that resist easy dismissal. The existence of replicable, blinding-resistant effects would not automatically prove an afterlife or post-mortem communication, but they would force the scientific community to take the phenomena seriously and test alternative explanations rigorously. Skepticism is crucial here, and the skeptics have strong arguments. Critics point out that memory is fallible, that information can leak in subtle ways, and that statistical artifacts sometimes masquerade as real effects. Some neuroscientists emphasize that to report a near-death memory, you must later have a functioning brain capable of storing and narrating the event. Therefore, any veridical report must have been encoded by active neural tissue at some point. Other researchers argue that post-resuscitation reports could reflect mistimed memories or confabulations after brain function returns. These are not straw man objections. They're methodological guardrails. When extraordinary claims are on the table, extraordinary controls are required. Careful experimental design, pre-registration, and independent replication are the only ways to move from anecdote to evidence. Yet the data that worry skeptics are mounting, and not always from the margins, Clinical teams with access to intensive care units are starting to capture physiological traces during resuscitation. Continuous EEG monitoring in some cases has shown that the brain's shutdown is more complicated than a single moment. The tachyarrhythmias, gamma synchrony and transient coherent activity recorded in dying animals and some humans, hint that processes associated with perception, synchronization across brain regions, for instance, may transiently reemerge or reconfigure during death. Some neuroscientists cautiously propose that this could represent an internally generated state of heightened perception, a last-ditch reconfiguration where the brain, in its final moments, reorganizes information in unusual ways, whether that amounts to ongoing subjective awareness, disconnected from neuronal hardware is a deeper philosophical and empirical question. Another piece of the puzzle that's Hard to ignore is the pattern in large-scale meta-analyses of mediumship and anomalous information